प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी फलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरे कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन our Puja Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. There has been many, many incidences in the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and even till that time as of right now that Bhagwan Swami Narayan, whoever has taken his refuge Whoever has completely surrendered at his feet, Bhagwan has taken care of that person without a single doubt. Bhagwan has rescued such kinds of devotees who had refuge, who had surrendership, who had faith, who had trust in Bhagwan. There has been many, many prasangs, many, many incidences by which we can understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan's compassionate nature by understanding and by even remembering and recalling such kind of charitras. We can actually feel Bhagwan's presence with us because when we look into our life, when we rewind back into our life, when we were in trouble, how did we get out of it? When we had some, such kind of maybe social, financial, academic, etc. and so on and so forth, problems in our life, how did we get by? Whether we can see or we cannot see, just like how an electron microscope is able to see atoms but without an electron microscope with just a very small regular microscope a powerful microscope atoms cannot be seen in the same way if our eye has not opened up if we have not or we, if we have not cultivated or learned how to see Bhagwan Swami Narayan's compassionate nature his his ever rescue nature then it's compared to a regular microscope versus an electron microscope in satsang after coming into satsang we have to and want to develop such a vision such such a, 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 a vision to see even the most minute most subtle matters so we can understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan's compassion upon us after coming into satsang we want to develop that electron microscope so we would not we would be able to see that every step I take every movement I make every single thing I do Bhagwan is always watching me looking after me caring for me and due to that we'd be able to understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan's compassionate nature today I would like to narrate the story from the Bhakta Chintamni written by Sadhguru Nishkuran Swami inside of the Bhakta Chintamni there are chapters and there are certain chapters a, a section which is called Paricha Vibhag 
meaning miracles section, if I can put it bluntly. Bhagwan Swami Narayan has performed so many miracles, not only in his time in that 200 years ago, 230 years ago, but now even till present time and still going, that devotees, saints, male devotees, female devotees, everyone has experienced Bhagwan Swami Narayan's presence, divinity in some way or another. Today I would like to narrate the story of Jivaram, Jivaram's close call. Swami Narayan Hare. There was a Brahmin devotee by the name of Jivaram who lived in a village called Vakaner. He was a Brahmin by caste and firmly abided by Sriji Maharaj's code of conducts. Thus, by following the co commands of Sriji Maharaj, he worshipped him wholeheartedly. Now, just like any other, Bhagwan Swaminarayan had many, many devotees. He made many, many devotees to be specific and exact. Bhagwan Swaminarayan, before he left this earth, he stayed on this earth for 49 years. Before he left this earth, he had made over 2 million devotee followers. Again repeating, no other avatar has ever developed that many devotees in that present time when that God was on earth. Proving Bhagwan Swami Narayan's supremacy. And among those devotees, Jivram was a Brahmin devotee that followed the code of conducts and lived and worshipped Bhagwan Swami Narayan throughout his life. He was a businessman by occupation. He used to travel to the Sindh region by ship to purchase grains and then return and sell to buyers accordingly. Now, India is a country where there is many, many states and on the west side, there's a state called Gujarat. Gujarat is touching the ocean side on the left, the uh, Indian Ocean. And the Sindh region is just a little above where Jivaram would have to take his ship, travel a little bit, and go to the other side uh, by ship. And there he would reach a region called the Sindh region. Currently, it's known as Pakistan right now. But in that time, it was known as the Sindh region. What he would do is he would gather, uh, get some grains, buy grains from there, bring it back on the ship, and then sell the grains uh, in Gujarat. Once he went to the Sindh by a chartered ship with his workers, he very much enjoyed doing bhajan and remembered Bhagwan Swaminarayan in his travels. Made Maybe you understand this talk today or tomorrow or a year later or 50 years later or before we leave this body or many lives later. But the very essence of satsang is to develop a constant remembrance of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. The more we can remember Him the more we can remember his name, the more we can remember his divine incidences, the more we can recall his divine qualities, the more and more we would start to become enlightened. Bhagwan Swami Narayan and his Ekantik Satpurush, what they want to do is they want us mere souls, and like souls, to develop an inclination to remember Bhagwan, to remember his form, to remember his name, to remember his divine incidences. When we will develop such kind of an inclination, they would become happy upon us, Raji upon us. And when they become Raji upon us, then what else is there left to do? Jivaram displayed such kind of an inclination in his life 
where he had an inclination of remembering Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the Mahamantra Swami Narayan, and Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Murti, which Maharaj very much liked. May I add that in the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, Jivnam was just traveling on his ship, going to the Sindh region on business. But while he was on the ship, he was remembering Bhagwan. If we look at it from a physical perspective, then we can just see that he is just traveling from point A to point B and then coming back to point A. If we look from a physical perspective, Jivram is just take, going to one region, buying grains for his business, and coming back and selling his grains so he can earn a living. But if we look at it from a microscopic perspective, this all was devotion or bhakti for Jivram because while doing all of his actions he remembered Bhagwan Swami Narayan if one learns to remember Bhagwan Swami Narayan in all his all all of one's actions then that automatically will become bhakti or devotion for a person that will not stay a karma or an action according to the Vachnamrut but it will become bhakti Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to perform bhakti Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to become engrossed in his divine form Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to remember his divine incidences only then one will be able to transcend cross the ocean of maya and go to the divine abode of akshatam because this world right now it's going on and on this world right now will not stop for anyone but bhagwan swami narayan his divinity his compassionate nature his presence his ever presence are the very factors which will help us transcend maya and go to the divine abode of akshatam on their way the captain spotted a suspicious boat coming towards them he sounded the alarm, alerting the crew members and Jivram. He informed Jivram that the suspicious boat might have pirates on them. In that time, there was many, much, much uh, looters, pirates, hypocrisy. And that's why Bhagwan Swaminarayan had come to wipe out all this. But still, from another region, we can understand that such kind of pirates might have come and they were coming right towards Jivram's chartered ship shortly the boat docked with the ship and came abo aboard the ship the crew and captain jumped into the ocean but Jivram did not know how to swim so instead of jumping overboard he started to chant the Swami Narayan Maha Mantra. Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. Sadguru Gunatitanan Swami says in his Vato, Today there is no mantra more powerful than the Swami Narayan Mantra. It makes even the poison of a black cobra ineffective and dispels the desire for material pleasures. With it, one becomes Brahm Rup and is freed from the bondage of time karma and maya that is how powerful this mantra is therefore always chant it also Swami has said what should one do when in difficulty the question was asked the answer chant, the answer Swami said chant Swami Narayan Swami Narayan so that the worry is resolved 
Bhagwan Swami Narayan gave such instructions to his devotees even in that time that when in worries just remember my form remember my name and I will be there and even after Sadguru Gunati Tanan Swami preaching preaching to devotees in the Sabha Mandap of Junagar Mandir also preached that when in trouble chant the mantra Swami Narayan now in our life we will experience many ups and downs but usually the habit goes we will not remember Bhagwan when we were on that up or that high but only when we come back down only when we experience pain will we remember Bhagwan Swami Narayan Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to remember him even in the highs and even in the lows if Jivaram had this inclination because before they encountered the pirates while going from Gujarat to the Sindh region Jivaram was in the high thinking that he would go to the region make a profit come back with the grains and sell them and he was chanting Bhagwan's name and then all of a sudden a pirate ship comes takes them over and is about to overthrow them and he is still chanting Bhagwan's name proving that his stability his mind stability is very very s strong firm and he has faith in Bhagwan Swami Narayan Jiram was tied up by the pirates the leader of the pirate gang stabbed Jiram six times the wounded Jiram was thrown aboard overboard into the salty waters of the ocean then the pirates left with the ship the crew swam with haste and reached the shoreland shortly Jiram did not meet his death even though he was stabbed six times now we can think who who could have saved him how could he still live even after being stabbed six times and thrown into the salty ocean without any kind of life vest without any kind of help without any kind of floating de uh, device how can he be saved what is it Maharaj divinely kept him afloat floating the ocean alone half conscious Jivaram could not figure out how he was still alive and floating then he began to pray Maharaj O oh Maharaj please come and take me with you he will pray for he did not pray for his life to be saved all he wanted to do was go to the divine abode of Akshardham with Maharaj to experience his bliss he did not care for his body he did not ask Maharaj to save him from all this pain that he had or he was going through now when we look from our perspective we think why is Bhagwan doing this I'm chanting his name I'm chanting his name I'm doing his puja I'm following all his commands and this is what Bhagwan does he doesn't even help me save me he gets he gets me stabbed six times this is a perspective of a person who does not have a divine vision on the other hand a person who has a divine vision on the other hand a, a person who has developed similar kinds of thoughts to Shriji Maharaj according to the Vachnamrut Bhagwan Swami Narayan's perspective according to the Vachnamrut Gadara Lash chapter 13 this is what a staunch or firm devotee would think it is that very God who is the sole controller of this body if he wishes he may oblige the body with an honorable ride on an elephant or if he wishes he may have it thrown into prison or if he w so wishes he may even place some serious illness into the body despite this one should never pray before God in the following manner 
Maharaj, please relieve me of my misery. Why? Because we want this body to behave in the accordance with the wishes of God. After all, God's wish is our wish. We do not want our preferences to differ from the preferences of God, even in the slightest way. Moreover, since we have offered our body, mind, and wealth to God, then now only the will of God is our prarabdha, meaning destiny. Besides that, there is no other destiny for us. Therefore, regard, regardless of whatever pain or pleasure we may have encountered by the wish of God, we should not become disturbed in any way. We should be pleased with whatever pleases God. This is the vision perspective of Sriji Maharaj. And this is the vision and perspective Sriji Maharaj would like to put into our heads our soul only then will Bhagwan Swaminarayan become happy upon us completely only then will Bhagwan Swaminarayan be able to do whatever he likes with his body only then will Bhagwan Swaminarayan have full faith in us when we develop such kind of an understanding according to Gudra last chapter 13th Vachnamrut This understanding is very, very difficult to develop. But if one puts m one's mind to it, if one reads and repeats such kinds of words of Sriji Maharaj, then one, when one encounters such kind of a situation and instantly thinks of these talks, then one will become reminded and one would be able to actually merge one's thoughts into Sriji Maharaj's thoughts, merge one's preferences into Sriji Maharaj's preferences. Jiram did not pray at all. Jiram's prayers were answered as Sriji Maharaj came to the rescue. How did he pray? But he did not pray for his body to be taken care of. He prayed so that Maharaj could take him to his divine abode, Akshradam. Because he had no kind of, uh, you can say, uh, sensation temptation for this world all he wanted to do was worship God and he saw that this is the perfect opportunity that Bhagwan will take me and give me divine bliss in his divine abode Akshardham. Jivaran's prayers were answered as Sriji Maharaj came to the rescue Maharaj appeared there with a small boat and untied Jivaram's, Jivaram's hands then Maharaj had him rest while he paddled the boat to the shoreline Maharaj healed the wounds of his devotee with a single touch, provided food and water and direction leading to the village. The crew reached Makaner and informed the family members of Jivaram's dilemma. By hearing such tragic news, the relatives who lived nearby gathered at Jivaram's home to mourn his death. However, Jivaram's mother didn't believe such talks. Even when close relatives tried to convince her, she didn't accept that her son was dead. The relatives explained to her that if we do not perform the post-death ceremony and rituals, people of the village will criticize us. We understand as a mother, you cannot acknowledge this, but what is done is done. Finally, due to many people influencing her, she accepted the disappointing news and became extremely saddened. She remembered Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Again, even Jivaram's mother had an inclination of remembering Bhagwan, and in such sad news, she started to remember Bhagwan's name, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. Immediately, Maharaj gave her divine darshan, and informed her that Jivaram was alive and will come home the following day. He advised her to tell everyone Jivaram will come the next day, come home the next day. According to Sriji Maharaj's wish. The mother shared this news with everyone. Many were quite surprised, and the crew members and the relatives asked, asked him how he could have possibly re remained alive on his return. Jiram narrated the story of how Sriji Maharaj divinely rescued him and how Maharaj healed his wounds with his, uh, w without any medicine. 
as a result of this, the entire crew was inspired and became devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Bhagwan Swami Narayan did not use methods that were extreme or physical to make followers or devotees. Bhagwan Swami Narayan showed character. Bhagwan Swami Narayan showed perfect personality. Bhagwan Swami Narayan displayed divine attributes. Bhagwan Swami Narayan explained and taught the philosophy of in Ekantik Mukt of Akshardham and how to become one. Bhagwan Swami Narayan spread his philosophy through talks, through his personality and character. And due to this, the crew members not only became devotees, but many, many incidences in Bhagwan Swami Narayan's life, just through Bhagwan Swami Narayan's character, just by Bhagwan Swami Narayan's compassionate nature, many have become devotees. We are very fortunate to become devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. We are very fortunate to have Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's darshan. We are very fortunate to have his God-realized Satpurusha's darshan. So therefore, after receiving such kind of a satsang, all we have to do is progress more and more and develop more faith and trust in Maharaj, just like how Jyotiram did. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan. वर्णिवे शर्मणीय दर्शनम मंदहासरुचिरानाम बुजम पूजितम सुरनरो तमेर मुदा धर्मनंदरम हम विचिन्तय श्रीगणश्याम महाराजनी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइट योर बिलोट कंस्याम महाराज पाठ में कटोर लिब्रेशन पूजे पाठ गुरुजी and all of you it is Jai Swami Narayan. Once upon a time, Sriji Maharaj himself was in Garda. At that time, there were many Paramahansa Santo and many devotees from different places. They also gathered in Garda for darshan and discourses delivered by Maharaj. So according to that, once upon a day, Sriji Maharaj was sitting in an assembly and in front of him, many santos and many devotees, they were gathered in an assembly. And during the discourses, Sriji Maharaj himself, he explained the greatness of his Paramahansas. Maharaj himself explain the greatness of his Paramahansas. Why? Because 
most of the paramhansas they were living very very humble life and because of that no one can even understand their true glory or greatness and because of that sri ji maharaj himself wanted to explain the greatness of paramhansas to the others because without knowing the greatness of the saints without knowing the glory and greatness of his paramhansas no one can join with them and as no one can join with the paramhansa meaning saints no one can attach no one can attain the bhagwan or the glory of bhagwan or the greatness of bhagwan and because of that sri ji maharaj that day desire to explain the greatness of his paramhansas to the devotees and the other people so maharaj narrated the importance of gopanand swami who changed the astrological con- configurations and even he had changed what was happen into like nothing happened meaning even though there were we know the incident when gopanand swami had uh give a promise to one of devotee krishnaram sastri in vadodara when krishnaram was he mistakenly uh, ex- uh he declared that there will be no uh, eclipse and on the other hand in reality there will be an eclipse at the time so he was at fault but still gopanand so his blessings saved his life and at the time because of gopanand swami's divine power even though the eclipse happened but no one could see into the sky so that was gopanand swami's divine power also sri ji maharaj himself narrated like how many times gopanand swami blessed the devotees for having rain and many other things so in this way maharaj himself explained the greatness of gopanand swami then sri ji maharaj himself explained nityanand swami's greatness like no one can conquer him in spiritual debate scriptural debate and then in this way he explained the greatness of nityanand swami and then brahmanand swami's greatness like uh, who no one across the entire country could compare brahmanand swami in poetry so Brahmanand Swami was such a poet, such an able poet that no one can be compared with him. So in this way, gradually Maharaj explained one after one Brahmanand's greatness. Then Maharaj explained Muktanand Swami's unmatchable saintliness. Like uh, Maharaj explained the incident when Sri Ji Maharaj himself was in Vartal and along with many devotees and Santo and knowing them uh, uh knowing like maharaj was there so the another group of bawas they came to kill maharaj and especially muktanand swami on the other hand maharaj was sitting in an assembly and when maharaj knew about that like uh the ba- group of bawas they were coming towards them so maharaj and the other santos and devotees they left the scene meaning they uh hide inside the rooms inside the mandirs and uh Muk- maharaj himself ordered muktanand swami to face the group of bawas then muktanand swami without any like hesitation or without any kind of fear he asked three things from maharaj like, maharaj please i want uh please give me three things like one f- uh, flower garland uh coconut and a bowl of sugar crystal sugar so maharaj provided him with these three things and when the anxious group of bawas they came then muktanand swami like uh even though they were coming to kill him still muktanand swami remained very very calm and while remaining in his saintliness because of his power of his saintliness he changed the atmosphere even though they have like the bawas have anger in their minds uh even they have bad intention to kill muktanand swami himself because they knew like muktan if muktanand swami would be killed then 
there will be no Swaminarayan fellowship remain on this earth because no one greater than him to preach the message of Swaminarayan to the people and because of that they decided to kill him and uh, on the other hand Muktanan Swami he offered a garland to the leader of the Bhava not only that even offered a coconut and crystal sugar bowl as a token of their a token of his uh, dedication or affection or devotion towards them towards whom towards those people th those who decided to kill him that was Muktanan Swami's saintliness and because of his power of saintliness even the group of Bhavas those who have bad intention to kill Muktanan Swami their heart automatically changed and they understood like Muktanan Swami was not like that he was very great and he even facilitated uh, us with the food and everything so in this way when they touch the Muktanan Swami's saintliness then they even transform they even change their way of life they even change their heart they even change their intention to kill him so in this way Muk Maharaj himself narrated Muktanan Swami's unmatchable saintliness in this way Maharaj uh, one by one narrated stories in the assembly and he was entertaining speaker who included advice uh, from his personal experiences into the discourses uh, not only the devotees but who came to Garuda were as much fascinated with Sri Hari's glorious uh, graciousness and wisdom as they were ewed by the superb manner in which he had built up the divine power of his Paramahansa saints. So after the assembly, Sandas Jiswami came to have darshan of Sri Ji Maharaj. Sandas Jiswami, who had like a uh, grace of Sri Ji Maharaj and because of Maharaj's divine blessings upon him, he can like uh, he can remain in constant rapport with Maharaj's divine form which is situated in Akshardham not only that but even he himself uh, whenever he desire went to the Akshardham in divine abode through the Samadhi not only that even he graced the other devotees and non-devotees to experience the Samadhi so when Sandhaji Swami came there and Swami first prostrated before Maharaj. Maharaj quickly rose from his seat, took a step forward and flung his arms around Swami. And in this way, Maharaj, <coughs> Maharaj himself embraced uh, Sandas Swami and introduced him to the Gedur Sadhus and devotees and praised him tremendously. Sriji Maharaj explained to everyone he has acquired the state of Samadhi. So in result he can travel everywhere overpassing all obstacles. Also he did not need to take any food or water for many days. So when Sriji Maharaj explained this greatness of Sandhaji Swami to the assembly then just as today what we cannot see by our own eyes or what we cannot experience by our own self we can never be able to believe merely by listening from the others we cannot accept those things as truth similarly at the time in an assembly maybe some devotees or maybe some santo they have doubt in Sandhaj Swami's greatness so Sri Maharaj himself uh, himself asked to Sandhaj Swami go to the northern part of the country and meet Daluji in his divine ashram uh, without like uh, explaining him where Daluji was situated or where his ashram in the Himalaya or something nothing he didn't explain anything but he just ordered to Sandhaj Swami to go to there and meet Daluji and explain him the greatness of Sriji Maharaj. So when Maharaj himself ex, uh, gave this command to Sandhaji Swami, then the other devotees and santos they have like uh, they have 
uh, small phone like how Sundar Swami care uh, Sri Jimaraj command because even today even we have uh, too many technologies as well as we have uh, roads and everything to cross the Himalayas and still it is difficult to stay there for a single night so think about uh, the situation before 200 years so at that time there were, there was no road no mortals no hotels nothing and still at the time Swami had to travel to the Himalayas how is it possible for him to survive So the people, the devotees and saints, they didn't believe like Sandaji Swami would uh, obey Sri Jimaraj's command. But Sandaji Swami agreed with uh, Maharaj's proposal and he replied, Maharaj, I am eager to carry out your commands. So Maharaj then bestowed blessings and instructed, tell Daluji all about my manifestation and the system of our satsang and our rules and regulations and everything about our satsang so by listening and knowing all about us Daluji and other muktas will become intensely happy there are 16 other muktas who live there with Daluji one mukt within the female order is also living there Sa uh, send ahead my divine blessings to all so merely Sri Jimaraj instructed Santaji Swami regarding his mission like this nothing more than that only his message but Sandhaji prostrated before Sri Jimaraj and departed. He did not know where to go nor how to get there. Nor, he, nor did he had food, water, clothing or other necessities with him. He just remembered Maharaj's divine form in his heart and within and started on his way. Maharaj became a guide for his path. Maharaj navigated him in proper destination. No address installed in the navigation, meaning nothing in his mind or nothing in his heart, in his heart and mind, only the form of Bhagwan. So, Bhagwan's divine form itself become the navigation or the address or a proper guide who lead him towards his destination. In reality, the divine place of Daluji was nearly impossible to reach. The route, the route passed through thick forest even where sunlight could not penetrate. Also many varieties of wild animals wander in the jungle. Also one has to journey through the woods with its thorny paths, snakes, howling wolves, the chattering monkeys and sparse meals of wild fruits. This That was the situation but without caring of anything else, Sandhaji just remembered the divine form of Sri Maharaj. So Sandhaji began to follow the form of Maharaj and with great surprise his body started to fly with fantastic speed. In just a few minutes he reached his destination without encounter without encountering any obstacles why because if we have Bhagwan with us we cannot have any kind of difficulties or obstacles in our way but why we are facing the difficulties why we are facing the problems in our life because we forget the form of Bhagwan we forget Maharaj we forget our Satpurus if we remember if we uh, keep Bhagwan and Puja Guruji in our heart, in our mind constantly, then we'll never have any obstacles or problems in our life. No doubt, any kind of like as we are a human being, so definitely we have the problems and difficulties in our life. But whatever difficulties or problem happen to us, immediately we remember Bhagwan and Puja Guruji because they constantly remain with us then not we but Bhagwan and Puja Guruji they can solve our problems and difficulties just as here in the case of Sandhaji Swami 
even though he had many kind of difficulties uh, because of he had to pass through many deep jungles amidst the wild animals still he didn't have any like obstacles or uh, no any problems happened to his journey why because he had keep bhagwan with him he had kept maharaj divine murti in front of his eyes so if we focus our minds ruti or intention to please maharaj please satpurush then we have also the same speed like that of sandas ji swami and we will also uh, perform our journey or our traveling without obstacle there he noticed the surrounding territory was different the atmosphere was filled with the divinity as 16 muktas were always engaged in worshiping the form of bhagwan so while, ch- while chanting various hymns from the vedas he was captivated by the beauty of the various types of greenery while walking further he found an open landscape surrounded by a stunning nature there was a beautiful small hut and just outside of it by a tree there was a sparkling personality sitting on a deer skin the face was framed with a white beard and mens and looked as if if uh, as if it po- uh, is it possessed an ancient strength with the staff the figure chanted god's holy name with a rosary so that was daluji himself So Sandas ji approached him slowly reducing the distance Daluji stepped down from the porch because he was also divine mukt and because of that he knew about arrival of Sandas ji swami without uh, inf- uh without he getting information from anyone merely by his uh, omniscient power he knew about swami's arrival so he came forward to Sandas ji swami and welcomed him Before Sandas ji could prostrate Daluji wrapped his arm in a round so Sandas ji swami and embraced him in lovingly so Daluji was in fact elated after meeting swami why because Daluji himself was eager to listen about Sri ji maharaj's greatness and glory what maharaj was doing as a human form on this earth so he arranged for an in, uh, individual seat and had sandas ji seat on it and then daluji performed swami's puja and aarti after that he was swami's feet with the holy water of the ganges and then prostrated before him the sun sailed towards the western horizon meaning that was the time of evening daluji understood the demand of time and offered specially ripen sweetened fruits Sundar ji in turn performed manchi puja and offered the food to maharaj thereafter partook in the prasad himself both sandas ji and daluji took their dinner together and after completing their meal both washed their hands and partook in some water meanwhile the other 16 muktas made decoration with oil lamps just outside the hut in the flickering light of the many weeks which floated in aromat tick oil within the lamps daluji invited swami to come forward so as the all the other 16 muktas they have uh, decorated uh, the land outside the hut and they made a small patch to sit upon uh, for sandas ji swami as well daluji so as everything were ready and after finishing their dinner sandas ji swami and uh daluji they both came out of the hut and they sat upon their particular seat so uh, as sandas ji swami sat on the decorated seat all prostrated before him and one after another touched the feet of swami and then pro- performed pujan with sweet smelling flower garlands so in this way the muktas of daluji daluji's ashram they welcome swami as well as the perform pujan of swami and after that 
as they were uh, they have like uh, prepare the oil lamp decoration uh, with the wonderful scent and uh, wonderful scented oil so because of that the atmosphere was covered with the wonderful smell all were seated in front of Sandas Swami and Daluji within the assembly uh, Daluji asked about the manifestation of Supreme Lord and his divine powers then Sandas Swami disclosed his heart's contents to narrate the glory and immense greatness of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So in this way, Sandhaji Swami began to narrate the divine episodes from the life of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. From the day he, he took a birth as a human being on this earth, from that to the younger age, then after how he traveled to the forest, and after completing his journey, he stayed there in a lodge under the commands of Muktanand Swami for nine months. And after that, he met Ramanand Swami and got initiation into Sadhu Fold. And after that, he received the ownership of this holy fellowship and become the head of this fellowship. And after that, he saw his divine miracles, his divine powers. And because of that, the thousands became a devotee. So in this way, Sandhaji Swami gradually in with full with great details explain the divine incidents of Sri Jimara to the Daluji and the other Muktas. So in uh, in this way Sandhaji Swami had passed many days and he had explained the method and everything regarding Bhagwan Swami Narayan's holy fellowship and not only that but even he explained to the other muktas how Maharaj had uh, uh, sprayed the method of getting ultimate liberation uh, with minimum effort for the people of Kadyu on this earth so in this way he explained everything about Maharaj and the satsang to the Daluji and the other uh, muktas after listening to all the discourses from Sandhaji Swami regarding the divine powers and persona of Maharaj Daluji at last gave his speech this time the supreme personality himself came to earth for the liberation of countless jivas he is the cause of all avatars previously those who had come as a form of god they were all an avatar of this supreme lord so naturally they did not have such powers so in this way sandhaji swami every day for six months explain about sri Jimara's divine charitras to the other uh, to the daluji and the other muktas and in this way, he explained the supremacy and uh, true nature of Bhagwan Swami as a supreme lord. So after that, Daluji appreciated Swami and kindly expressed, Swami, we are pleased after listening to the life incidents of Supreme Lord Swami Narayan. We are especially thankful to you as you have shared your valuable six months with us. Now we understand the supreme glory of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So please, if you want to go back now, you are allowed to go back because the Supreme Lord uh, is uh, right now in a human form in Garuda and because of that if you you go there then on behalf of us you should tell our message to him like please be please upon us and grant us your divine barak Saddam. so in this way you can send us uh, send to Maharaj our message not only that but as you have also a human birth so you can also enjoy the remaining divine episodes of Sri Jimara's life so in this way Daluji and uh, the other muktas they give a uh, divine farewell to Swami and Sandhaji Swami ready to coming back to Garuda and he closed his eyes remember the divine form of Maharaj and within a few seconds the form of God appeared before his eyes and guided him towards the village of Garuda. 
In this way, within a few minutes, he returned to Garuda. Sandaji Swami came down to Darshan of Sriji Maharaj in Dada Kachus Darbar. Uh, Maharaj was seated under a neem tree, and Sandaji Swami went there prostrated before him, and Maharaj also embraced him. Uh, then Swami, then he asked about his journey, and uh, so Maharaj asked Sandaji Swami about his journey. How was his journey, and like. Uh, uh, how was his staying there in Daluji's ashram? Then everything about this. So in this way, Swami explained everything in detail to Sriji Maharaj. Then finally, Maharaj uh, said to the devotees and santo, those who were seated in front of him, like Daluji's place was divine and no one can reach there, nor can they see it. But it is like only because of my grace. Sandhaji uh, had their darshan in human form and stay among them for six months. So in this way, the adventure of Sandhaji Swami, that was like really a great deal. Uh, not only that, but even no one can do with a human form, with a human body. And that can done by, uh, that can be done by Bhagwan Swami and Santo. That's the main thing. That's the, the their greatness. So such kind of greatness, Maharaj himself had narrated in front of the many santos and devotees. Uh, Sandhaji Swami's life was uh, was totally great and divine. And there were many such incidents happened to his life, and he had many fo uh, many times followed Sri Maharaj's divine command for the sake of the satsang, for the sake of the other muktos, and for the sake of even the Muktos and Rishis of Badrikasram. Uh, so, in this incident, by narrating divine incidents of Sri Jimaraj to the Daluji and the other Muktos, Sandhaji Swami perform a great task by obeying Sri Jimaraj's command and give us the message to keep Bhagwan's divine form in front of us. Not only that, but when we keep Bhagwan's form as well as uh, Ekantik Satpurus like that of Puja Guruji with us in our mind, in our heart then we'll get like easy path and even we cannot have uh, any kind of obstacles in our life if there will be any obstacles or problems happen to us then Bhagwan and Puja Guruji will solve us themselves by saying this my humble Jai Swami Narayan Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dharmatma Jamvasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai